Hi guys, in this video I want to share with you some tech stacks that I always trust. Now, uh, there are three stages. So one is the POC stage and the MVP stage and the production stage. And so I trust three different technologies for these three different stages, right? So POC is basically proof of concept. So if I have to build something very quickly and show it to a client or show it as an idea to somebody, then I use React and Firebase. So Firebase, as you know, is a backend as a service. It helps you get uh, things built really quickly because you don't actually have to physically build those APIs. And then I use React, obviously, for the front end. Now, why do I use Firebase only at the POC level? It's because Firebase to use, I've found it to be very expensive to be used in production. So that's why I always use it in, in the POC level only. And also I don't, I feel like I don't get a lot of control with Firebase. So that's that's also the reason why I um, you know, use it only at the POC stage. Uh, similarly, Strapi. Strapi is a backend, complete backend, which um, automatically builds APIs for you based on a form. You fill a form, it builds APIs for you. So Strapi also, I've never used in production. I've always used it at the POC stage. Uh, it's almost like just filling a form quickly and getting those APIs, right? So you don't have to code much here as well. But when you want to change things, so Strapi, uh, I would suggest don't use in production because when you want to change things, right? When you want to add a lot of custom functionality, it becomes really difficult with Strapi. Uh, that's at least my experience, right? So I always use these technologies in the uh, POC stage. Now comes the MVP stage, so which is the minimum viable product. So this is once you're done with the POC stage, uh, now you want to test the market with the actual working product, right, which is your MVP. So here um, I either use Flutter if it's a mobile app or I use React um, for React.js for uh, the web app, right? And I use GraphQL and Apollo. Now at the MVP stage, uh, what I've noticed is about 80% of the MVPs you take to the market, they uh, end up failing, right? So there's a high chance, a very high chance that Actually, it's more than 80 percent. Actually, all right. So, uh, so there's a very high chance that this product will never even get built. So it'll, be, it'll go as an MVP and it'll fail in the market completely. All right. So, whenever I'm building an MVP, I'm thinking that there's a high chance that this may not even make it as a real product. So, it's very important to not commit too many resources and time and energy to building a product that might not be used by the um, user so that's why it's a it's an, it's an experiment whereas poc helped you to uh, get your idea across uh, to start building an actual mvp or to uh, you know uh, get your idea validated but mvp is an actual experiment right you're taking it to the market and charging people for it right so that's an actual experiment most of the times it might fail all right so here i use graphql because it saves me a lot of time rest apis take a lot of time but the problem with graphql is when your team has to expand very fast then there's not a lot of resources in the market that know graphql so that's why i only recommend using graphql at the mvp stage only because uh, you'll you can get the work done by a few resources but then when you want to expand your team when you want to convert this into a real production level to big software um, it becomes difficult with GraphQL all right because of the uh, lack of resources in the market all right uh, both at the backend side who can make GraphQL APIs and, and at the react side uh, side who can you know create uh, who can consume those GraphQL APIs with Apollo so like, like I said you know I use react and flutter and then use Apollo to consume the GraphQL APIs I use node.js to create the GraphQL APIs and I use Mongo now, if the MVP is slightly bigger, like let's say it's not just an e-commerce platform, but it's more than that, it's like a CRM, it's a project management software, something like that, like an MVP, uh, a more complex MVP, then I use Molecular, which is a, a framework with Node.js with, uh, with the help of which you can big, uh, build uh, microservices, really, uh, microservices really quickly, all right? So using Molecular. So this is uh, what I use in my MVP stage. And uh, when I say production, I, I mean that a product that um, has gone through the POC stage, has gone through the MVP stage, and now it has val been validated in the market, people are paying for it, and now you want to really scale it up, right? And uh, this is where sometimes most of the companies, they raise, raise a Series A fund or even a seed fund if it's a big product. The seed fund also covers a lot of expense. So after you've raised funding, you want to build, re-architect your platform, right? Uh, I always recommend this. I don't suggest going with the uh, you know previous platform because that was built by a very small team for a very small use case. Now you want to expand. You want to across expand uh, expand across the globe, right? You have raised Series A funding, and you want to re-architect your entire program. And this is where I start using Golang, right? So I don't use Golang as you see in the POC and MVP stage. But when I want to scale it to the cloud, uh, when I scale it to the you know to to infinity or whatever, I start using Golang. And these are Golang microservices, right? So in one in one microservice, I've just shown an example that I'm using Golang, uh, sorry MongoDB with Golang. In another microservice, I'm using Postgres. So these are the only two databases I'll be using in production because I'm very very comfortable with that. As anything breaks, I can easily quickly fix it because I'm an expert in MongoDB. I'm an expert in Postgres, right? So so I use and I'm an expert in Golang. So I 
I don't uh, consider myself that great in Node.js and that great in Firebase and Strapi and all these things. But I know that I, if when the shit hits the fan um, with Golang, I can do anything, right? So that's why I use uh, Golang in production. But Golang also takes a while to build things. But when you build things with Golang, they're super solid. As in, um, I, I've, I've never faced any issues. They just never break, all right? So... Um, so there, there will be hundreds of microservices, but they will be either in MongoDB or Postgres database they'll be using, all right? And then I'll use Kafka, which again, uh, I'm an expert at Kafka. You can find any other queue service like RabbitMQ that you're comfortable with, but I'm super comfortable with Kafka, so I always, always use it. And then I use Redis Cache. I always use a lot of caching for sessions and for other type of data that I can get to the front end really quickly. I use Redis Cache all the time. And sometimes I also use their, uh, you know, uh, queue service for messaging also, right? If I want to implement messaging, I use Redis Cache also sometimes. Uh, then you have, uh, in the front end, I use React and Hooks. And if it's a mobile app, I'll use React Native and Hooks. So there's one big change. In MVP, you saw that I was using Flutter. In production, you're seeing that I'm using React Native. The reason for that is React Native um, is I find it to be more stable. It has been uh, in the market for many more years. There are a lot more resources available uh, in terms of you know developers and also resources in terms of Stack Overflow. There's so many issues have been solved already for React Native. So I always prefer using React Native for a, a huge product. All right, and but at the MVP stage, Flutter is good because you get a lot of templates online quickly, easily. You can pick it up and build the app really fast. All right, and um, here I use traffic, um, uh, you know, uh, as as a load balancing kind of a tool, and Sentry is what I'm using for uh, logging my application level uh, errors and issues and crash analytics. All of that is going to Sentry. Then I'm using Docker, Kubernetes, and Jenkins, the holy trinity, the, as I call it, because I love these three technologies. I use them in all my production level applications, um, and I've built a lot of production level applications for a lot of clients, right? So, and this is the stack that I always keep on using again and again and again, and that's why now I, the, the products that I make uh, now I'm obviously uh, at the uh, when I head these projects, I'm not at the person who's coding it, but their own team is coding it. I just uh, work as a consultant mostly if there's a big company building a production level application, but this is the architect, the architecture kind of a thing that I built for them now mind you this is not an architecture diagram this is just I'm just showing you the list of technologies but uh, but in future videos I'll also show you how you can start architecting your solutions and then I use docker like I said docker Kubernetes and Jenkins uh, right and then I use Prometheus for monitoring right this is uh, the best monitoring tool that you can find in, on the market I feel and I always use it it's very advanced it has like everything that I need uh, to log errors to find the location of those errors to fix those errors it gives me a lot of data so this is basically what um, my production stage looks like. Now there's one more um, tech stack that I use quite often. And this is when I know uh, I'm, I'm with the company from right from POC stage. And I know that they have a lot of funds to actually get to production and actually scale a lot, right? Let's say a Y Combinator backed startup, something like that. For them, I'll use uh, at the POC stage itself, I'll use uh, the serverless stack. I'll go completely serverless and I'll use API Gateway, Amplify, Lambda, DynamoDB, CloudWatch and React.js for the front end. All right. The reason is that um, once you know that they're funded by a company like Y Combinator, uh, there's a high chance that they again get funded by Sequoia or something like that in Series A, right? So that means that um, they they will pivot or whatever, but they will make it to production because they have so much funds. And that's why you can use a technology in the, that, that can be used at the POC level and it can be scaled to production as well. So that's why I start, I like to use the complete serverless stack because you can s scale it up really easily with no, no glitches, no problems. You don't have to re-architect a lot, all right? And so this is like a hack that I'm uh, sharing with you. You can also apply it, uh, but only in a, sp in a specific condition. If you try to use it everywhere, it just won't work because with serverless, um, you know, again, there are there are resources are limited uh, in the market. Uh, you don't find a lot of developers who are comfortable with the serverless. And also, um, for a product that you know might fail at the that you might think they might fail at the POC stage or the, the MVP stage. Uh, somebody who doesn't have a lot of funds, you might want to, you know, uh, do this quickly as a cheap, quick and cheap, dirty kind of uh, products rather than going complete serverless stack. That's what I think. All right. These are all my opinions. These are all things that I've done in the uh, in the industry um, since the past many, many years. So I'm sharing all the real things that I've been doing with you and I'm not just giving you some, you know, theory. All right. So thanks a lot for watching and do check out my other videos. Subscribe to this channel if you like this kind of content and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.